Welcome to everybody. Thank you for joining. Um, today, we're going to be talking about simplifying infrastructure and network automation with HashiCorp and Traffic. So my name is Matt Elgin. I'm a solutions architect with Traffic Labs, uh, and I'm joined by Andy Azare, who is a senior solutions engineer at HashiCorp. So before we dive in, I want to start by outlining a brief agenda to talk about what we'll be covering today. So we're gonna start with a couple of quick introductions to the companies. So we'll talk about HashiCorp and Traffic Labs. Um, from there, we're going to dive into the partnership and start talking about some integration use cases in more detail with accompanying demos for each of those use cases. So we're gonna start with traffic as an ingress for Nomad clusters. Um, with that example, we'll also talk about using console catalog as a service provider for traffic. We'll extend that example and talk about the newly released integration with Console Connect to leverage that service mesh capability with traffic. Um, and then we're going to wrap up with some examples with uh, Traffic Enterprise and Vault to manage TLS certificates. So we'll start with an example of using Vault's PKI engine as a certificate resolver, and then we'll also touch on the KB store as a TLS provider as well. And once we get through all that, we will open it up for uh, questions at the end of the presentation. Thanks, Matt. All right, and thank you uh, to the traffic team for hosting this event. I appreciate uh, you all and appreciate you all for, for tuning in. Uh, so I'd like to start by sharing some, some background info about uh, HashiCorp for those that are not familiar uh, with who we are. Uh, we build infrastructure tools for practitioners, and our tools are used quite extensively across all types of organizations, large and small, uh, and around the world. And in fact, there's a good chance engineers at your company are using our tools today, if not you know, many of you all who are in attendance. Um, these are foundational tools for some of the most important workflows. Terraform, for example, is a, the most widely used infrastructure provisioning tool in the world. And it's actually not our most uh, downloaded tool. So I'll see if anyone can guess uh, which of our tools has the most downloads. Of course, we wouldn't have gotten very far uh, you know, without the strength of our community. And it's incredible to see the participation and enthusiasm, good guess, uh, from practitioners all around the world that you know, uh, this events like this, um, HashiCorp users groups, uh, HashiConf you know, conferences and other events, DevOps events and things. Uh, so a bit about HashiCorp, uh, all of our tools are open core. So the foundational workflows are uh, open source. And then we also provide enterprise additions with capabilities and enhancements specific to the needs of our enterprise customers. Uh, so as Matt mentioned, today we'll be focusing on Nomad, Console, and Vault. Just a brief refresher there. So Nomad is a workload orchestrator available for use at any scale. You know, what that means is if, uh, whether you're a small shop with just a few engineers or a very large enterprise with, you know, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of engineers, Nomad Simplicity plays well with small teams that are deploying to production, but also scales to handle very large infrastructure very well. So, you know, beautiful about Nomad, it can scale to be just about any size. And then console is a service networking solution that enables organizations to discover and connect applications running across you know, multiple infrastructure environments. Console maintains a registry, which provides up-to-date you know, list of application endpoints that are alive and healthy, deployed in your infrastructure, uh, along with the health status of those. And then console is also platform agnostic. So it works across you know, a range of one, a runtime environments, bare metal, virtual machines, containers, and more. And then Vault is an API-driven cloud agnostic secrets management system. A little bit of a mouthful. I like to think of it as an identity broker. And what's, you know, Vault really allows us to rethink how we actually access secrets with the idea that we can build much more secure environments by relying on identity access management and using short-lived credentials that are generated on demand uh, you know, really dynamic credentials than we could, that we can, you know, with traditional methodologies of administrators, you know, generating and entering static credentials and then periodically rotating those. Uh, so here are just a few of our customer stories and, and we have, you know, more on HashiCorp.com if you're interested. 
Roblox and Pandora, cloud native companies, you know, they really need to innovate rapidly to stay ahead of their competition. And Roblox, like with Nomad, they found that they could iterate on their ideas much more quickly. And they also use their hardware much more efficiently. So, you know, using Nomad, they actually doubled the efficiency of their underlying compute in terms of the number of games served per machine. Um, Adobe uses Vault to secure the guts of their creative, creative cloud platform. Uh, we're approaching a billion transactions a month with them. And then the Toronto Stock Exchange went from taking about a month to stand up one of their elastic container pipelines manually to, you know, once they've adopted infrastructure as code with Terraform, it's, it's down to a day for a development environment and a week to go to production. Uh, and so, you know, significant improvement. And also without some of the, the same security and compliance concerns that they had in their previous process, because they're able to use pre-approved, you know, vetted infrastructure as code modules. So really a game changer for them to be able to take, you know, compliant capacity, uh, you know, on demand at scale. Awesome. Thanks, Andy. So now I want to provide a quick introduction to Traffic Labs as a company. So a little bit of history. So we were founded in 2016. Um, we're now a globally distributed team. Um, and at our core, we believe that uh, less is more when it comes to technology. Uh, we really believe in the power of open source software and of the community that, that powers those tools. Um, so you can see on the bottom of the slide that Traffic Labs is behind uh, a few different projects and products, uh, namely Traffic Proxy, um, which is a very widely used and trusted open source project, um, as well as some of those additional products and, and projects that you see listed as well. Um, so speaking to some facts about the community, uh, so we have surpassed uh, over 2 billion downloads of traffic. Um, there's a large active community of both users and contributors behind that project. And uh, tools are run in production by some of the, the world's uh, leading organizations all around the world. So Traffic Labs offers a unified networking stack that is built for the cloud native era. So what does that mean exactly? So that means that uh, the tools are going to be at home in containerized environments um, like orchestrators, uh, microservice architectures, but at the same time, they are flexible enough that they can work well in legacy environments like bare metal or virtual machines, um, or even uh, hybrid environments uh, with a combination of those two. And because of that fact, it's a, a great choice for meeting organizations where they are in their modernization efforts uh, with an eye towards the future in that, that cloud native era. So there are a few guiding principles behind the, the tools that we create. Um, and one of those is simplicity. So we really put a premium on ease of use and being able to get up and running quickly um, and providing a, an intuitive developer friendly experience and configuration approach. Um, on top of that, we believe in being automation ready so that we can plug these tools easily into CI CD pipelines or GitOps workflows, uh, allowing our dev teams and our ops teams to really collaborate as effectively as possible. And finally, uh, we truly believe in, in being cloud native and really build from the ground up along those lines. So um, provides all of those aspects of being dynamic and scalable and, and resilient like you would expect from a cloud native tool. Next, we can dive in a little bit more detail into the specific offerings of the traffic stack. So I will go a little bit out of order of the, uh, the way that things are presented on the slide here, but we'll start with traffic proxy, which is kind of our flagship open source project. So traffic proxy is a flexible reverse proxy and ingress solution uh, that works well for a wide variety of infrastructure types. Um, and that provides intuitive and flexible routing to all sorts of backend services and applications. Um, we can pair that with traffic mesh, which we'll talk about next, which is a simple opinionated service mesh for Kubernetes clusters specifically. Um, so it's designed to be lightweight and unobtrusive, but at the same time, uh, powerful and flexible enough to 
uh, provide some fine grained uh, control over service to service communications in those clusters as well. Um, next, kind of combining both of those offerings, we have Traffic Enterprise, which, as the name suggests, is a enterprise grade integrated offering of proxy and mesh that also layers on some additional capabilities that, that large organizations find important. So things like a distributed architecture with high availability, um, expanded options for TLS management, which we'll take a look at a little bit later, um, and API gateway functionality like authentication and others. Uh, finally, we have Traffic Pilot, which is a SaaS offering that you can connect to your traffic proxy instances that uh, provides monitoring and alerting and, and custom plugin functionality for all of those instances. So I forgot to mention, uh, you know, I'm coming to you from uh, California, United States. So if you hear any um, gasoline powered leaf blowers coming through on my audio, I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do. That's the sound. That's the sound of, uh, of where I live. Okay, so the first use case that we'll be going through is uh, traffic as an ingress for Nomad. And so, you know, obviously, ideally, you're already using Nomad, or if not, you're looking for a powerful, lightweight orchestrator. And, you know, whether, either way, uh, traffic is a great fit uh, for providing an ingress into your Nomad cluster. So the use case here, you know, you'd like a means to load balance incoming requests uh, to services, you know, within the Nomad cluster to handle those requests. And so uh, traffic makes that very easy. Terminate TLS, present whatever um, certificates that you need, and we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, and so uh, here's an example job file. So we schedule workloads in Nomad with uh, what we call a job specification or a job file. It looks a little bit like this. Uh, so very, quite easy. Uh, we're going to use the Docker driver. Uh, we list, you know, we specify the image that we're going to use. So traffic uh, v2.5. Uh, and then right below, we're able to put in the sort of static elements of the traffic configuration. So this is really nice because, you know, we have this configuration as code, right? We have all of the traffic uh, configuration that, that it needs statically defined provided here in this job file, which will be part of, you know, we'll, it's an artifacts code, you know, we'll check it into our, our version control system. It makes it very easy as we need to do upgrades, rollbacks, and things of that nature. Um, and then also, you know, we can run this in Nomad as either uh, like a service, which means that you can specify the number of, of instances that you like in the cluster or as a system job. Uh, system job in Nomad means that it'll, you know, an instance of the traffic proxy will be automatically run on every, on every eligible Nomad client. Uh, so we're going to build on this in the, in the coming, in the coming um, you know, section here. Uh, and then sort of the last piece is you'll have, you know, you'll have some way to distribute the incoming traffic between the, the Nomad client nodes, right? So you may use round robin DNS in front or L4 load balancing in front, BGP, Anycast, something like that. Um, and so they'll have health status of traffic proxies to round robin the request. And then, um, and then what's nice too is, so as, as you handle sort of graceful, you know, upgrades, uh, Nomad has rolling upgrade support and things like that. So you would add, you know, um, then you can, so that combined with using uh, like, uh, you know, grace period timeouts with traffic to, you know, sort of gracefully drain connections from a node as you're doing an upgrade. So that sort of stuff's very, very easy. Okay, so ne the next piece now is the console catalog as a service provider for traffic. Okay, so, you know, just a quick refresher, um, you know, console provides a service registry with health checks and traffic plugs in to the console API to then read from console's catalog and configure itself automatically and dynamically, right? So no, beyond what I'm showing here, no additional manual configuration is necessary. Now, just to, sorry, out of context, what I'm showing here on the slide is scrolling down from the previous slide, right? So we've got a nomad job file, the traffic, uh, this is sort of the traffic configuration. If you're familiar with traffic, you, you know, this syntax should be very familiar to you is kind of how you define um, the traffic static configuration there. So uh, a couple things, we'll tell it uh, a prefix, uh, hopefully traffic, uh, you know, you can set whatever you want. Uh, that's the default there. But what that means is we're saying, hey, traffic, I want you to look at the tags of the console services and anything that starts with traffic, that's what I want you to pay attention to. 
we'll get if it's not clear we'll get into that in a, in a moment right then there are some other uh, sort of uh, defaults and um, you know just a sampling here but uh, you can you know choose to opt any services in by default or not uh, that's kind of you know if you want to do opt-in where you know services that are in you know any service with a tag uh, any service in console could be opted into traffic routing by default. If you want to do that, you can also set constraints or limits or filtering to, you know, to, to specify which ones, or you can opt out by default and then main, you know, have cons uh, uh, services that are properly tagged to be exposed. Uh, you can also do things like set a default rule um, that you can also easily override those configs on a service by service basis. So there are a bunch more advanced settings that are detailed in the documentation. Of course, you also specify the console API endpoint, uh, and this works across you know cross platforms, right? So whether you're running this on Nomad, Kubernetes, wherever, uh, this is all you know the, the, what we're showing here will apply equally well. Uh, okay, so we've, we're plugged into the console API. What else do we have to do? Uh, well, per perhaps nothing, right? If you're opting in by default, you set a default rule, perhaps like those. You you know you could potentially make this completely automated, um, but you know it, it may be a good idea too to want to be able to specify things on a service by service basis or be able to do overrides. So the next step is uh, you can annotate, right? So this is an example of a console service definition. Uh, for a Redis service, for example. And what we've done is we've applied tags. This is metadata to the service definition in console. Uh, we've applied a traffic.enable gets true. So there we go. We're sort of opting in to make this service uh, available, you know, routable through, uh, through uh, traffic. And then what we're doing is we're defining a routing rule here. So uh, we're not going to go, uh, you know, uh, uh, Matt can, if we, you know, uh, can cover the specifics or, you know, we may not get to the specifics of the routing rules uh, syntax in this, in this conversation. But what we're doing here is we're defining an HTTP router called Redis. And we're saying, hey, make this available through traffic at the path Redis, right? So, uh, but there's much more, you know, there's a much richer set of things that you could do here. This is just a simple example, right? So now tying this back to Nomad, you can define these tags from within a particular services job specification, right? So uh, you can, you're, let's say I'm scheduling this Redis job on Nomad. I have my, you know, uh, Redis uh, Nomad job specification. I define my Redis service. I can put these tags right in there. Right, so it's a single file that defines running my Redis job and applying these tags in console, and then traffic picks them up from there. Right, so very very powerful. Uh, and like I said, we're going to do a demo of this in a moment. Really really important, really powerful. Right, because this means that you know we're really the, the sort of uh, I mean this is, is the essence of DevOps. Right, I mean it, you know, like we, we we're you don't have to submit a ticket like okay I run my service. I run my application. Now I need to go submit a request, submit a ticket to another team, and wait for them to go and configure pool members, add you know do stuff on the load balancer to expose that service. Right? It's all contained configuration as code. It's all defined in a single place. Right? All right. So now we're taking that one step further, and that's what's really new uh, this month is uh, so a quick refresher here on console connect so we're going to talk about console connect you as an integrated service mesh for traffic console connect is a service mesh it's secured by by default provides zero trust networking for uh, applications and the concept in a service mesh is that application security is enforced using service identity rather than an ip address right moving away from sort of statically defined ip based rules ip port type of acls to a service identity and a service-based rule. And I'll, I'll show you an example of what that means. But ultimately, this reduces the complexity and dramatically simplifies your network operations, right? Uh, because you're able to say something like, hey, you know, web is allowed to talk to DB. And no matter how many instances of web, how many instances of DB, that's the only rule you need, right? So commonly, you'll use a, a sidecar proxy to facilitate this. So you know, in, in practice, what, what happens is your orchestrator or console will um, deploy a sidecar proxy alongside your application. And then communication between applications is routed through the proxy. And so that's how we're able to enforce mutual TLS between the services is through those, through those proxies. Right? So the application would just talk to the local host 
proxy. All of its communication goes through that proxy. So we're able to enforce uh, what communication is allowed and, and disallowed, right? But in addition to the sidecar model, applications can also integrate natively with the Console Connect API and, and then, you know, cut out the middle person there, right? So now uh, no, no sidecar. And, and this is particularly beneficial for applications that are, you know, performance uh, or latency sensitive, right? So that's exactly what Traffic have done. Uh, version 2.5, pretty amazing. Uh, native support for the Console Connect API. So, con you know, Traffic 2.5, completely console aware. Peer certificates, service transport objects, first class citizens and traffic. This is really dramatically simplifies this, right? So they don't, you don't have to uh, manually export the certificates from the console and update configs. It's completely automated, right? Dynamic. So uh, that also means higher performance, right? Uh, lower latency uh, with, with, with traffic and console connect. And so how do we do that? One line, right? So there is, and you can set this as a global default in the traffic config. But, uh, or, you know, you can just opt in here. So what we've done here is we've added traffic.console.catalog.connect gets true. And that's telling traffic that this service, and, you know, so in addition to its other tags there, that this service is console connect enabled, right? So now traffic's gonna know, okay, I need to get the AP, I need to get the address and port of the proxy. And I need to get the certificate that I, you know, and communicate over, uh, over the mesh to, to get to this service, right? Very easy. Okay, so uh, now I'll go ahead and show a, a little bit of a demo. So brief overview um, of the environment. Someone earlier, Jeff, uh, called out Vagrant. So Vagrant is not the most downloaded HashGrep tool, but we are using Vagrant. Love for Vagrant, definitely. Uh, so in this re repository that is uh, associated with this webinar, and the link will be shared, um, what we've done is we've created a demo environment that you can, you know, you can replicate this, at, you know, at home. Um, there are, it will spin up two machines. So the Vagrant's kind of facilitating the, 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 the virtual environment. It'll spin up two VMs using VirtualBox and those will be Nomad uh, kind of doing double duty here. It's really nice about these tools is that Nomad server, it's a Nomad cluster. So it's a Nomad server and Nomad client. Um, same thing, console uh, cluster, console servers, console clients. Um, and we'll be using Nomad to run our, you know, run our applications. Um, and then there's console there providing the service registry. And then in the, the latter half, we'll be showing how to integrate traffic enterprise, uh, use, utilize vault for secret storage, right? All right, so let me switch over. Oh, right. Uh, so oh, there we go. For some reason, there's a big Sur issue where every time it pops out the dashboard, every time I start my screen sharing. Okay, so here we have the, uh, so like I said, the, the link will be shared. If you're a lightning fast, you can copy it down right now. Um, but this is the, rep the repository that we're working off of. Let me move that. And uh, so I have a local copy of it here in my uh, IDE. And uh, like I said, quick re recap. So that's the, the diagram. So we're gonna go through and what we're, what we're gonna do is I've already done some, I'm skipping some steps here. So this is sort of, this is outlined for, you know, for your information, if you'd like to recreate this at home, how to spin up this environment, um, kind of skipping ahead. So I've already done that. So what we're gonna do is we're going to run a traffic. Uh, so, so the traffic job looks something like this. I showed a little bit earlier. Uh, so we've got the traffic, uh, you know, job specification where, um, you know, data center DC one running as a system job. So an instance of traffic proxy will be run on all uh, eligible nomad clients. We've got some static port. Uh, these are, you know, these are the ports that you're going to be reaching traffic on. So, you know, reach it on 443, reach it on 80. Um, health check defined. So tra traffic has like a ping, you know, health status endpoint. This, this will go to console. Uh, and then this is where we define, like I said, the, the image, um, the driver, and then the, some of the static config. So you can see here, we've got uh, the console catalog provider. We've got, um, you know, the prefix, like some of these are, these are the defaults, but just sort of for, you know, uh, made, just wanted to call them out to make sure people, and then you can see we've got connect aware to true. So this is the one, I don't know if I, if I called this one out, I may have missed it. So this is uh, new in 2.5. 
this is what you'll set in the traffic config to, to tell traffic, hey, we've got, uh, we want, you know, we want to do console connect. Um, okay. So, and then the next part, oh, uh, actually, I'll just go ahead and do that. So we'll just nomad uh, jo uh, run jobs traffic.num. So we'll go ahead and run that. Um, and the next piece is we're going to run a simple uh, demo application. So it's called Who Am I? Uh, it's really a, it's kind of a deep question, actually. Um, so uh, this is a simple demo app that is going to sort of echo back some useful information uh, for us just to kind of say, hey, you know, uh, we, we, re we re reached a, this service. So we're going to run two instances of that. Uh, and then we've also defined, like I, like I was talking about before, we've, we've defined our, um, you know, sort of our tags for, for traffic to read, right? So we're putting them right here. It's all contained in one file configuration as code. We're putting in our, you know, service routing configuration right here in the same, you know, for, uh, this is sort of the developers able to do this right here, right? Uh, so we have a single artifact. And, uh, and then we're, yeah, so we've got the dry, Docker driver. This stuff is less important for this, uh, for this session. So, so they go right there. All right. We can go ahead and run that. Okay. So you'll see in the, in the repository that sort of just for Ease are, you know, we've also added the graphical component. So there are some port mappings uh, in the Vagrant file that sets up this demo that makes these uh, UIs available on your machine if you're running this at home. So you can see we've got the traffic uh, service running. We've got the Who Am I running. And we can go over to our console catalog and we can see that they're alive and healthy. So, uh, you know, so live demos, everybody cross your fingers. Hopefully this works. All right, awesome. So um, what I've done here, now the 8080 is because I've exposed this on my uh, local machine, but if I'm running this in the demo environment, then it'll be, um, I'll just do a kernel localhost, who am I, right? Same thing. So you can see here that uh, what we're doing is we're hitting traffic, port 80. We're hitting instance of traffic. And then we've asked for the path, who am I? And so that is basically proxying us to one of these uh, who am I services. So this is the, this text here is from the who am I application uh, that it's outputting, right? And so you can see one of the things it outputs is its remote address, like what it sees as the, where the request came from is a 192.168.88 address. Um, that'll become important in a little bit. So keep track of, of what that is. Um, and this is just the environment we've configured, uh, you know, for, for these machines to use as their local network. So you'll see that in a bit. Okay. So the other thing that I think is really important that we don't want to overlook, right, is that all we did is we, we have traffic running in our cluster and then we ran Nomad, I'm sorry, we ran who am I, you know, we scheduled this, this job with these tags, right? That, that's all we did. We did, we didn't do anything else. And now traffic automatically ingests that, you know, information. It's pulling the console API. So it can automatically pick up those tags and start load balancing, start handling requests, right? Start, start making that service available. We didn't have to do anything else. So, so very, 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 very nice, right? No, no, you know, it's just, it's completely automatic, right? So, uh, so the next step is, let's go back to our, so we did that. Okay, I don't, want, I don't want to give away any spoilers. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is now we want to go to add in connect, right? So we want, right now it's totally, you know, sort of in the clear. It's HTTP, port 80, um, you know, not very secure, right? So we want to bring this into the service mesh and use mutual TLS communication between traffic and our backend service, right? So what we're going to do now is we've made a few updates. One of them is we've added a connect sidecar. Uh, so we, we're telling... We're, we're telling, we're basically, we're telling Nomad, Hey, I want you to spin up a sidecar for this service connected to this port. And then we've added in that other line I showed console catalog .connect gets true. That's pretty much it. That's all we've done. So let's go ahead and run that. Okay. And then, um, this is just going to replace the other instance of who am I, um, Nomad's going off this job name. Right, so because it's got the same name, we're just running, as far as Nomad's concerned, it's just a new version, we're running, rolling out a new version of this app. So it's just gonna replace those, right? 
So they're going to go ahead and be placed and then uh, start reporting their health status. You can start to see, okay, so it's already starting to pick up and you can see that here in console, it's identifying as uh, who am I is in service mesh with proxy. And you can see the tags that have been updated. Oh, it's still the second one's coming up. So let's just give it a moment to kind of settle there. Um, you know, tra uh, traffic.console catalog connect gets true, traffic.enable true, right? So should be coming up in a moment. Perhaps refresh. Yes, yeah, it's, it's good. One healthy. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to go like that. So now if I run the same command as before and I uh, curl localhost who am I, should be alive. Oh, something's not working. Uh-oh, what did I break? Live demos. Uh-oh. But maybe something is happening that is intentional. Uh, so this is a introduction to console intentions, right? So now that we're acting inside of the service mesh, how do we define the, the ACLs? right? Looks like I forgot, right? I put in a rule here that denies traffic from reaching any other services. That's what this is. So an intention is a service-based rule. And what we've, what we, you know, we have the ability to do now is to essentially police, you know, the security of the network uh, with these very simple scalable rules, right? So there you go. That was actually expected. If I go back and uh, we, we can, we can take a look at it here. If I go ahead and I put this in the demo, so let's go ahead and, uh, you know, I can skip that one. So we'll create an intention that allows traffic to communicate to the WhoMI service, right? So we'll do ahead and do that. And now if I, right, so now, so now we're in business, right? Uh, and so that's, that's just an, you know, so that's kind of, I guess, you know, proof that we're in the mesh here, right? But, but that's kind of the concept of, of intentions. And if you're interested in that, I'd encourage you to learn more. Um, and then the last piece is, yeah, I said, pay attention to the remote address. So you can see here that if, if you were, if you remember, it's been changed, right? So now the remote address is a 127, is a local host address. And that's because who am I is seeing the request come from its sidecar proxy, right? So, uh, so now that we've opted in to connect, there is an, in this case, it's an Envoy sidecar attached to who am I, and that's where traffic is directing its, its request that's coming in through there, right? So there you go. So the last piece is uh, I was going to show the certificate. Let me go ahead and uh, if I go over to the who am I, uh, I just have to do this and check one of what the port is. An example of the ports is 3768. So if we go ahead and just to kind of bring it home a little bit, that may not work. And then if I do it, yeah, okay. So this is just showing you, um, we're just doing a curl command in here inside the sort of inside the mesh, if you will. Uh, this is just to show you like, you know, this is the common name of the certificate. So, you, so this is what console is issuing to the Envoy sidecar, right? So similarly traffic, this is a whoami.service.default, you know, dot console. That's uniquely identifying the who am I service. And then, uh, you know, the traffic, uh, you know, traffic plugs directly into console's API and gets the certificates it needs to be able to, to communicate over the mesh. Right? So any questions, please put them in chat and we'll have time at the end. Uh, so thanks very much. Awesome. Thanks, Andy. So I'm going to take over presenting here now. So let me go ahead and hit share. Awesome. So we'll keep going here. So we'll pivot from the demo, go back to the slides for just a minute. Uh, we'll talk about the last couple of use cases, and then we'll pivot back into the demo environment to, to finish out the session before Q&A. So we are going to wrap up with a couple of examples here that are leveraging an integration between Traffic Enterprise and Vault to manage uh, TLS certificates. So there are a few different ways that we can delegate our TLS management to Vault when we're using Traffic Enterprise. And the first one that we're gonna talk about is using Vault's PKI engine as a certificate resolver in Traffic Enterprise. So if you're familiar with uh, Traffic Proxy and have used the certificate resolver uh, concept in the open source version, um, it's commonly used with services like Let's Encrypt, where you can basically automate the management of your TLS certificates that are gonna protect your services. So the issuance of certificates, the renewal, all of that is totally taken care of by this certificate resolver uh, mechanism. 
so we can lean on the PKI engine in Vault to uh, handle that type of approach. And this approach is a good one for organizations that want to take advantage of that automation that is provided to get rid of that manual effort of renewing and keeping an eye on certificate expiration um, without having to rely on public services uh, via the ACME protocol like Let's Encrypt. Um, so how this is working at a high level, basically we have uh, Vault uh, with its PKI engine enabled on the back end that is going to function as an internal CA. Um, we can also integrate this with some uh, other CAs if we want to uh, leverage uh, public facing certificates as well. Um, and the way that we're going to actually enable this in our static and dynamic config on the traffic side is first in our static configuration, we're going to set up a vault PKI certificate resolver. So this resolver is going to specify a few uh, specific details so that we can connect to our vault server. Um, for example, we're going to point to the URL that the server is running on. Um, we are specifying the engine path that the PKI engine is located. Um, if we're using Vault Enterprise, we can also incorporate namespaces into this setting as well, uh, as well as a role that we're going to use to actually issue these certificates against the, the PKI engine. Um, we're finally going to set up some sort of authentication method. Um, we can either do token-based authentication or use APRL as a, an alternative there as well. Um, and that's going to set up our static configuration uh, on the traffic side. For the job definition, if we take where we were just looking at the who am I definition, um, there's just a single additional tag that we're going to have to update here. And namely, that is referencing that vault PKI cert resolver that we're setting up in our static config. So by adding this additional tag, we're able to take advantage of all of that automation and uh, we'll have those services uh, protected by, by TLS with all of that, that automation um, on the PKI side of things as well. Another approach that we can use in Traffic Enterprise to delegate the management of those TLS certificates is to instead use Vault's uh, KV engine to um, store existing certificates that we're, we're importing into Vault that can then be read into Traffic Enterprise. So this is a good approach if you are an organization that already has your TLS certificates being generated from an external CA, for example, and you want to leverage the security and best practices that Vault provides and, and be able to seamlessly read those into your, your Traffic Enterprise instance and uh, protect your services in that way. Um, so the mechanism here is going to be similar to what we just looked at for the PKI example, where in our static config, we're going to set up a vault provider that, again, is going to specify the location of our vault server, the engine path, the authentication method, again, here, token or app role, um, so that we can actually pull these certificates successfully on the job definition side of things in Nomad. Again, it's just going to be a single tag that we're going to add to our definition. So in this case, rather than referencing that certificate resolver, like in the PKI example, we're just going to set TLS to true and let the, the host names match up uh, between the rule and the certificate to uh, resolve that. So there are some additional configuration options we can add here if we want to adjust how frequently Traffic Enterprise and Vault are talking to each other to make sure we've got the, the most up-to-date certificate. We can tune that. Um, the other thing that we can do here is we can combine this Vault provider with a dedicated ACME agent that is provided as part of Traffic Enterprise. So if we were using a service like Let's Encrypt and we wanted to uh, have the ACME agent download those ACME certificates and then store those in Vault, we could then have those uh, read from Vault uh, to uh, multiple traffic enterprise instances as well to be able to streamline that process kind of at scale across our environments as well. So what we want to do now is go back to our demo environment and take a look at both of these examples in action. So let me exit full screen here. And I will go to my IDE as well. 
So um, like Andy did before the beginning of the demo, there are a few setup steps that we did uh, prior to this demo, just in the interest of time. Um, namely, what we did is we have swapped out the uh, regular traffic proxy job with the uh, traffic EE, the traffic enterprise job. So we won't go into too much detail on the installation or the, the difference in the job definition, but if you're interested in uh, following along, uh, that repository has all the installation steps. You can get a trial license to, to follow along and, and test out the differences as well. So we've got that set up. Um, we can take a look if we go over to our Nomad UI, we can see that we've got details on the uh, tasks in our traffic EE job. So um, referencing the distributed architecture and traffic enterprise, rather than just a proxy, we now have a controller that is responsible for configuration and for talking to the provider API, a plugin registry if we want to host uh, custom plugins that we've written, and then a couple of proxies that are, are running in a highly available fashion as well. So with that all set up, we're now ready to start walking through the first example. So we're going to start with that Vault PKI example. So there are a few Vault setup commands that we're going to need to run running into this before we can deploy an updated version of our Who Am I job. So we'll start first by enabling that PKI engine in our Vault server. Next, we need to run this command that is going to generate an internal uh, root certificate for us to use. Um, one thing to note here is that we're using this vault PKI cert common name and kind of like that remote address in the previous example, we're going to key on this to uh, show the differences between the certificates as we're running through these examples. So the final step we need to run from a Vault perspective is we're going to configure this traffic EE role that we're using um, with a few different options. So specifically, we are going to set the allowed domains for this particular example. So in this case, we're using localhost. Um, we can set whether we want to allow the bare domains and subdomains. Um, so in this case, we're allowing the bare domains, but disallowing subdomains for demo purposes, but we can toggle that as well as needed and setting a max TTL to 10 hours as well. So we've got all this set up from the vault side of things now. So what we want to do next is make sure that we've updated our static and dynamic config on the traffic side of things. So traffic enterprise comes with a dedicated command line tool called uh, TCTL that enables uh, managing of the traffic enterprise instances, um, applying configuration, some other common tasks like that. So we're gonna use that to apply our static and dynamic config here. So we run that um, real quick. Let's take a look at the files we just applied to make sure we understand what's going on there. So the important thing in the static.yaml is the couple of sections that mirror what we just looked at in the slides. So we've got the vault provider where we're pointing to the vault server in our demo environment. Um, in this case, we're using the root token because we have our vault server running in dev mode for demo purposes. Um, and similar idea for our vault PKI, we're setting up that certificate resolver. We've got the server URL, the role and that root token again. On the dynamic side of things, all we're doing here is uh, exposing our enterprise dashboard so that we can take a look at the uh, configuration as we expose these services. So we'll take a look at that in a second as well. So the next thing we're going to do is run an updated definition of our Who Am I job. So we're going to run that now. And as that's updating, let's take a look at our updated job definition. So this is going to be pretty much identical to what we were just looking at in the last example of the Who Am I deployment. Um, primary change that's happened is the addition of that cert resolver tag that we're gonna use to reference that Vault PKI cert resolver in our static config. So that's all we really need to do to be able to leverage this, this uh, integration here. So we see that that's updated. Um, what we can do real quickly to verify is we'll take a look at our traffic enterprise dashboard 
So you see here, we've got the router details for this Who Am I application that we're exposing through traffic. We can see that we now have a TLS section where this pane has been populated, where TLS is set to true, and we're using this Vault PKI certificate resolver um, like we just specified. So that all looks good here. What we can do now to do a final check is we're going to curl that endpoint that we just set. And what we should see if we scroll up to our certificate information is that issuer is referencing that Vault PKI cert CN that we designated during the Vault setup as well. So we're going to close the demo with uh, one additional example uh, where we're leveraging that uh, Vault provider using the KV store. Um, so again, in this scenario, generally this would be the case where you've already got your certificates being generated elsewhere. You want to import those into Vault for use in traffic. Uh, for demo purposes, we're just doing a simple uh, local host self-signed cert with OpenSSL. So we're going to grab that real quick. Um, so again, note the CN here, we're doing tls.localhost in this example. Um, once we've generated that uh, set of PEM files, we're going to then put that into the KV store in our vault instance. And finally, update our job definition one more time. So while that's updating, we'll again take a look at the updated job definition. And you'll see almost identical to what we were looking at for the PKI example, except we have updated our routing rule to, in this case, we're just mass matching on the host name. So we're looking for requests for that tls.localhost host. Uh, we've also, rather than referencing the Vault PKI cert resolver, we are setting TLS to true. So we see that that has finished updating. If we go over to our dashboard again, we see TLS is still enabled, but that cert resolver section is no longer reflecting that Vault PKI example that we set up previously. So one last test, we will do one more curl command to that tls.localhost. And if we scroll up to the cert information again, we see our issuer now is that self-signed certificate that we just generated. So we're reading that from Vault successfully as well. So with that, that concludes the uh, presentation and demo. So uh, thank you very much for your attention and uh, attendance. And at this point, we would like to open it up to any uh, questions you all may have. Thanks, Matt. So there were a few questions uh, I, I, I think I addressed. So one of them was, there, there are a few that are kind of um, uh, traffic enterprise, um, traffic enterprise licensing, Oh, yeah, Florian was sharp. He caught the intentions uh, quick, pretty quick. Um, there was a question about algorithms as well. Uh, what algorithms can traffic use? So traffic enterprise licensing, and then uh, what algorithms can traffic use? Let me check. Cool. Sorry, finding the mute button there. So for the licensing question, so traffic enterprise is primarily licensed on a per environment basis. So essentially we're gonna look at the uh, number of, of clusters or environments that you're gonna be deploying the, the traffic enterprise uh, into. Um, there are also within that a couple of additional uh, tiers that are broken out by um, primarily kind of the, the redundancy in SLA. Um, so if, if you have kind of specific questions about that, I'd encourage you to to reach out, I believe the, the correct email would be sales at, at traffic.io to, to find out some more information about that for your particular use case. Um, then I can dive into the uh, algorithms question. So the default is a basic uh, round robin across the copies of the services you might have in the uh, backend of your cluster. Uh, you can also 
leverage some different types of algorithms that are exposed through traffic services. So you can set up, for example, a uh, weighted round robin. So that's good for use cases like uh, blue green or canary deployments, if you want to leverage that. Um, and then there's also some other capabilities that are uh, provided, like being able to mirror a certain percentage of your traffic and things like that. So primarily round robin, but there are some, some additional options there as well. here uh there oh um so there were a few questions uh, real quick so there was a question from um from vlad um about how does uh, traffic talk to console how does it get its services list so i was saying that uh, if i respond in the chat to that um so we you know, in your traffic configuration you'll provide the console api address and cert like you know its certificate um if you need you know acl token things like that um specify if it's you know https and, and so on um so that will enable traffic to be able to reach out to console um and then it'll use console's api to you know query uh you know services or read tags and, and so on and so forth there was also a question um, about running traffic as a raw exec job. Um, so I I don't think um, it may matter from traffic perspective, but um, yeah, so as Florian pointed out, that's a good point. It may uh, impact the way the sidecar is able to be spawned for like a for like the, the who am I service, you know, an example service. So I uh, may need to follow up on that one. Um, and I, I kind of pause the question back of, of um, you know, I guess what would be the rationale or for, for wanting to run as raw exec only because, um, you know, there are considerations there as far as, um, security on the host to be, be mindful of, um, there were another couple questions around. Uh, so is Matt, uh, Matt, do you want, so there's a, tra is traffic EE required to use local TLS certs? Do you know that one? So traffic EE introduces uh, additional options for managing TLS certs. So the, the vault examples that we showed today are reliant on using traffic EE. Uh, there's also a built-in TLS store that uh, you can leverage on the enterprise side. So some of those are enterprise only. Um, but that being said, you don't need the enterprise version to just manage your, your TLS certs. So if you um, either want to um, leverage something like Let's Encrypt or, or just manage your own TLS certs. That's something that can be managed outside of the, the built-in store and outside of uh, the, uh, the Vault integration outside of Enterprise. So we'll be able to, for the questions that we don't get to, um, we'll be able to share the answers uh, probably on the repo or some other means. Um, so so it, as we're running up to the top of the hour, if there's some we don't get to, um, we'll be able to get you those answers. Um, there was one other. Uh, yeah, so TC Dev Zero, uh, I can see the Connect service showing up in traffic, but I'm also getting bad gateway intentions created traffic to dashboard what MS. So uh, please, yeah, please double check the readme there. So um, you'll want to, you know, you can always delete all the intentions, uh, in which case it, it would be allowed, um, or you can, um, you can delete that traffic deny all intention. Um, you can create that. So you'll want to create the allow intention that you'll want is traffic uh, allowed to who am I? Um, I'm not sure about dashboard, if dashboard refers to, um, I'm not sure which dashboard you mean though. Uh, there's a question about whether, uh, does traffic support console enterprise namespaces? I was pretty certain it does, but 
I'm going to double check on that. Uh, I got to go check the docs there. Uh, I don't want to make sure I give the, the correct answer. But with that, I think we can probably, uh, we're at the top of the hour here. So, um, yeah, thank you all, uh, certainly from, from the HoshCorp side. Um, appreciate uh, all the engagement. Um, thanks for, for tuning in. Um, and, uh, you know, hey, send us, check out the repo. Send us, send me a, an issue, pull request or something. Um, and there's lots of great material linked at the bottom there too, as far as other resources to check out. So, thank you. Thanks everyone. Take good care. Thanks everybody. We'll see you soon with the with the recording. Thanks so much. Bye bye.